I were to build another no-code tool in 2025, I'd probably do things a little bit differently. In this video, I'm going to tell you my personal favorite tools to build a no-code SaaS this year without writing a single line of code. We're going to start by taking a look at what the best design and development softwares are to actually build this, how we can actually choose a backend for these design softwares. Then we're going to go into syncing this software with a backend, how we're going to do that. Then we're going to take a look at a logic auto automations. And finally, we're going to talk about the juicy stuff, payments and launching. So that's going to be the roadmap for this video. I'm going to leave the timestamps to everything in the description down below so you guys can follow along and jump wherever you need the information most. So starting off with the idea, the idea is going to be the most important thing, obviously. Now, it's important to know this and to actually say this with no code is that since you're dealing with no code, it's important to remember that there are some limitations. And when I got into no code, I had the idea that with no code, you could build absolutely anything. And you probably could, but there is a limitation with the tools at hand and how far you can take it. But with that being said, it's important to pick an idea that solves a niche problem. Having this niche problem allows your users to not really mind that it's built in no code. Now, some ideas are perfect for no code tools. Here I have two examples. One of them is Unicorn Factory which is built by a fellow YouTuber and he has a massive job board site, kind of like Upwork, but for very specific niche freelancers inside of New Zealand. And this is a thriving product. It's a thriving community. So this is a great example. We can find designers here that are perfect for what we want. We can filter by what we want. We can look at all the different case studies. We can find different examples. And if we go into Wappalizer here, we're gonna see that it's actually built with Webflow and Webflow e-commerce. And we're linking a bunch of things like Hotjar. So we can go even further than, than just the basic native tools that Webflow offers us. But we can see here that this is a good example of a SaaS that you can build with no code tools. It's not necessarily too advanced, too crazy deep, but it still is a pretty difficult software to design, to build, to develop, and all of that with no code. Another example here is MakerPad. And this is kind of around the same thing. We can filter by different things. We can find different tags for content types, for business types, for example, data here. And go clear all the filters again, change back to everything, we can go by tool so we can see Webflow. This is a great example in itself of tools and other examples that you can build using no code. And also when you go into MakerPad, it's cool to look at all the different filters here, especially when you go into automation, you can see all the less known tools, like for example, WhaleSync that is an incredible piece of kit that allows you to connect different databases in a more dynamic way. And we're gonna talk about WhaleSync and other tools like this later on in the video, so stay tuned for that. But just play around with MakerPad, I'm gonna leave the link to everything that we talk about in the description so you guys can see. But with that said, and that kind of out of the way, let's take a look at the best design tools to actually create and design this software. So you might be at the point where you already have your idea and you're just kind of in this video to find what the best tools to use is, and that's completely fair. So now that you have your idea, you have it set in stone, you know what you're gonna do. The best place to go next is to actually start getting research and designing. We're gonna skip the research phase because that's just going on Google and finding your competitors and all that. But number two is gonna be design. Now, this is my own SaaS that I designed. And keep in mind, this is very limited. This is very quick. But Figma is going to be your tool, your go to tool to actually design this product. It's completely free for the majority of the app unless you want to do something pretty extensive. But in this case, this allows us to do various different designs for our product. And this was something that I created back in, I think it was like 2022, and just different examples of how we can feature our component here. And so this allows us to really have a wide exploration of designs. And here we can create different components so that in our design software, we can be pretty extensive and just do, for example, the 404, or if you want to be a little bit dramatic, we can also do that. But this is kind of where you can design everything that you need to have for your SaaS. It's important to design every single page just so that when you go into the development phase, later on, we'll talk about that, you're not left wondering how you need to design or build something because you haven't done it yet. So it's important to add in absolutely everything. So here there is the pricing options, the, I mean, the finalized order, the different features that we wanted, sign in, sign up. And this is just a very simple plug and play kind of thing, but it's important to add in everything, especially 
the small details because then if you are collaborating with a no code developer, then they get to be able to build something a lot easier. So in this case, if we go into dev mode, we can see what the developer would actually be seeing. So in this case, we have a card and we can see all the spacing. We can see, for example, the typography, and this is with Tailwind, but that's more development focused. So anyways, if we zoom out here, we can see all the other things, the various generations of home pages that we've got here. And now we're onto this one and then some inspiration that I grabbed from a pretty nice design that I found. So pretty similar there in the inspiration, trying to not go too far with how deep we get inspired. But anyways, then we have some real life examples. And anyways, you get the point. You can go pretty far with all this stuff. It's important to just have everything designed and written down so that nothing is a surprise when it comes to actually developing. Now, some people disagree with that and they think that it's important to just start building and that's also completely fine. Whatever works and whatever gets you to the finish line faster. In this case, this is what works for me. Then when it comes to actually developing the idea, there are multiple tools that we can use. Now, the tool that I built was originally built inside of Webflow and that looks great and it works perfectly fine. But seeing how we are now, I think it would have been better to use something else. Now, the reason being is because you're kind of cornered into a specific tool. And so whatever tool you do pick, make sure that it is going to be great for now and also good for the future. Because if you don't do that, you're kind of left with having to either migrate the site to another platform or custom code it or whatever the case may be. So just keep that in mind. But Webflow is going to be a great primary use case for no code tools. The reason being is because it has a lot of different integrations. Webflow is an enormous tool now. It has obviously built websites for all these different people, so many millions and millions of people use it now. And there's all these integrations, starting with the most important one, the new and noteworthy ones. We have Reloom, we have Make, we have Stripe, Clay, Figma directly. We have FinSuite Components, which is going to be a major, major part. It just allows you to kind of build out your entire site with a lot of different features. And then when it comes to the other stuff, we also have JetBoost, which allows you to add even more features like tagging different CMS pieces and all that kind of stuff. Then we have Wiz which kind of allows you to build even further on top of it. And all this you can kind of do with no code except for ways that's code. But you get my point. There's a lot of pieces to the puzzle and Webflow already has a lot of these things kind of baked in with all these different integrations. Whale Sync is another incredible different app and I talked a little bit about them, but you can control your CMS from a spreadsheet. So if you connect to one of our databases and we'll talk about the database later on, but this can kind of act as a live sync between your database and your actual live development design. There's also Make, which acts as a similar kind of automation tool. And of course there's Zapier, which is more of a static tool, but is also built in as an integration which allows you to go super, super far just with everything that's available to you inside of the Webflow app store. Then we have Framer. Now I talk a lot about Framer and Webflow, of course, but Framer allows you to build and develop a site very quickly. And I've done a lot of videos about them, but with Framer, it doesn't necessarily need to be a super extensive site. If you have a, an idea and you want to just get something out and make money from it, you can connect your Google Sheets or your Notion, have that be kind of like your database and then start selling with something like Lemon Squeezy or all these different connections that are also now available and starting to become more and more popular. Just because Framer is more of a new tool, it's a little harder for all these tools to kind of catch up in these plugins. But anyways, we've got Sheets, we've got Semflow, we've got Airtable, Notion, all these things that can kind of scale up your different app. And that's part of why I think Framer is a decent tool to start to think about when you are building a very low scale, simple SaaS. If you want to build something crazy, I would go against Framer for that purpose, but something like a simple CMS connection where you just want to send information in and out, similar to the examples that I showed in the beginning of the video, like MakerPad, that would be perfect for Framer. You have a simple CMS, filters, something simple like that, and then you want to make money out of that. That is totally doable with Framer and that's fine. And here's our example of Google Sheets where we can have our data and actually send it out to Framer. Then apart from these two classic tools, we also have these new additions. We have bolt.new and lovable.dev. These two are pretty insane. So basically what you can do is you can create an entire app, an entire anything you want, just by either importing your Figma file or asking it directly in ChatGPT style. So for this example, I'm gonna say, create an app 
that allows users to copy paste Figma components from a database, something like that. And it's gonna prompt us to sign up or sign in, so we're not gonna do that. But we can see that what it basically does is it creates an entire new app or platform just for you with code. So it's kind of like no code, but it kind of is code. So if there's anything that you need to change, you are kind of screwed because unless you can tell the AI exactly what's wrong with it and how to fix it and do whatever, then you might not know how to change it. So that's gonna be a little bit of a problem. You're kind of stuck with whatever code it gives you and that might not be a bad thing if you know how to code and you know how to do all that. But since the point of the video is no code, this is kind of like an iffy app. Then there's also bolt.new, which gives us the same thing. You have to sign up. But anyways, it's kind of what a lot of the people are doing nowadays that want to create apps. They're starting with this. So it's a great starting point if you're going to create something in React or anything like that. So I wanted to add these two in, but it's not specifically no code. They're just going to create the code for you without having to write anything yourself. So I just wanted to add those two in there. But keep that in mind that you're going to be getting code back to actually edit yourself. So now that we've talked about the idea, the design, the front end, it's now time to talk about the back end. The back end is just going to be a big database. This is going to be where our data can actually live and connect to our front end. We'll talk about the connections later on, but if you go back to MakerPad, I just love this as an example because it's kind of perfect for what I want to talk about. We can see that all this information lives somewhere, right? And this somewhere can either be in the CMS of the platform itself, so in this case, Webflow, or it can be in a database. And so here I have three options. My favorite is going to be Superbase because it's an open source platform. So this allows you to have a massive community and just a ton of different resources in case you are stuck or need to connect something. And it's a great, great app to use. And this works perfectly with WhaleSync. So it's one of my favorite ways to connect WhaleSync. And it's a great way to get started with a database and also authentication and stuff like that. But this is a little bit more advanced. But either way, Superbase is a great database to use. And then we've got Xano. This is what I previously used for my own SaaS. And this allows all of my components and my users to be in a single platform. And so I don't have to rely on the database limitations of Webflow or Framer or anything like that. And so it becomes really useful when you start to grow and you pass 10,000 users and all that, where you don't necessarily need to worry about the limitations of the CMS. For example, with Webflow, if I remember correctly, there's only 10,000 items that you can store inside of the CMS before you start to have to pay like 20K a month or something ridiculous for their custom CMS plans. So you're definitely going to want a database. And the pricing for these things can be a little bit costly, but in this case, it's free up to 100,000 total records. So that's pretty good. And then they have a no code API builder. So also fantastic. So keep in mind, all these tools do have associated costs with them. They're not all going to be free. They have pretty decent free plans, but they're not going to be free completely. If you want to have like a custom domain and all that stuff, it's going to pile up, right? No code is no code, but it's also a little bit more expensive than custom. And lastly, we have Airtable. Now, Airtable, I think, is going to be the most user-friendly option for the database. It allows you to do all the same stuff that we've been talking about. It's just a little bit more similar to Google Sheets or something like that before you go deeper into Xano. And this is something that I was considering, but there weren't that many ways to connect to it in the time where I built my own SaaS. So I'm not 100% knowledgeable on Airtable. I just know that it's a great platform. It has a lot of users and so I can recommend it. I just don't have the crazy experience needed to go super in depth talking about it. All right, now we have talked about idea development backend. Now comes the fun part. Now we need to connect the backend with the front end. We need to sync each two, and we've talked a little bit about this already. So one of my favorite tools that I use to actually connect front end to back end, you guessed it, is going to be Whale Sync. Now, I like Whale Sync more than something like Zapier is because it's dynamic. It's a lot faster than having to wait for Zapier or anything like Make to kind of make that connection. Now, you can see on their landing page that their main thing is this two way sync. And we can connect. We see here with Airtable, with Notion, HubSpot, Superbase, Google Sheets, Salesforce, and a bunch of other connections. But it's a lot faster faster and easier to do this connection when you have a tool that's kind of built for the platform that you're building on your front end. In this case, their main thing is to be able to connect to Webflow with this kind of two-way sync and a database, whether it's Airtable or Superbase or whatever it is. And also they have a really nice site, so I have to give them that kind of bonus point 
rather than not, especially when it looks like this. And they claim that it's built for enterprise, so that's also a good one. Then we also have Zapier, and Zapier is similar, but it allows us to add more automations. We'll talk about that later on, but you can also use it to sync with your database, although it is a little bit more clunky. I would use Zapier as a backup if you can, and then Whale Sync as your main sync because it's going to be faster if you're building in Webflow, and then maybe use Zapier if you're building inside of Framer. Now that we've connected our front end and our back end and everything syncing, we need to talk about adding a little bit of smartness, a little bit of intelligence with automations. Automations is going to allow us to be a little bit more hands off with our product, and that is going to come in the form of sending emails, being able to do specific automations and tasks like making sure that your user is actually paying for his account when he tries to access something that's gated and all of that. So to do that, I like to use a tool called Outseta, and this is what we use for Tilebit. So Outseta is going to allow you to do the full CRM thing straight out of the gate and also email automations, all that. Although keep in mind that it is a little bit pricier, but it still is a great tool to use. We also have member stack, which is a huge part of the whole flow of a user signs in, signs up, doesn't get access or gets access to gated areas. Member stack and Outseta is gonna be one of the most important parts of the whole flow. But if you wanna do it in a more custom way where you don't necessarily need to rely on that, then you can use things like Whale Sync and Zapier to connect your database of users to, for example, an email platform where you can kind of send emails back and forth. And that's a lot more custom. So it's not necessarily as no code hands off as using something like Outseta, but it can be done. And so that's another way of doing it. Lastly, we have the most fun part of all, which is actually making money from all the hard work that you put in to create this tool. And so I would recommend Stripe. There are other actors out there in the space, like for example, paddle.net. And this is what I used previously because the whole merchant of record thing that they sell makes a lot of sense. But Stripe just acquired Lemon Squeezy, which also has this whole thing. And it's not a pain in the ass to use Stripe, whereas it is a quite pain in the ass to set up and use everything in Paddle. So I recommend Stripe. Go with Stripe, don't even think about it, just do it. For example, OpenAI is there, Amazon, Google, Airbnb, I mean, yeah, you're in good hands if you go with Stripe. So that was a pretty long video and I apologize for the length, but I think it's important to go a little bit deeper than usual. So just to recap, we have the idea, starting with something very niche that can be accomplished in the scope of things with a no-code tool. Then we have design, Figma, that's all you need, free. Then we have Webflow, Framer, Lovable, Bolt, all these new tools that have just come out. They're gonna be absolutely incredible, but keep in mind the limitations because they're still quite new and AI is new and all that stuff. Then we have the backend allowing us to connect to different backends with Superbase, Xano, and Airtable. And then actually connecting to that would be Whale Sync, Zapier, and Make. And then finally we have member stack and Outseta that allows us to create these user accounts or doing it custom with Whale Sync. And then finally, finally, finally using Stripe. So anyways, guys, thank you guys so much for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys are thinking about building in the comments down below. I look forward to seeing them.